call the meeting to order and read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission uh, for the 13th of May, uh, 2021. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and our duties include open space acquisition and management. Uh, we operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes a, a hearing for a request for determination of applicability to determine if resource area boundaries are accurately delineated. Uh, this uh, and the Pan Am Railway right of way in Northampton. Um, and also a review of a construction plan in Turkey Hill Road um, and any other business not foreseen. Uh, so uh, first, I guess, is uh, notice that the meeting is being video recorded, although it doesn't always work. Um, we at least try to have it video recorded. Uh, and then asked if there's any general public comment not having to do with any specific case. And if not, uh, we have minutes. Um, there were two sets. I was here for the uh, February 11th meeting. Uh, those looked okay to me. Someone want to make a motion to accept those minutes as, as written? Do they be approved? And a second? Second. Any discussion or amendments to those meetings? A minutes? If not, all in favor? Sarah, you need a roll call? Yes, I do. Uh, Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yep. Randy? Yes. Jack? Mason? Yep. Randy? Yes. Jack? Uh, Jen? Yes. Alec? Yes. And Jason? Uh, Jen? Yes. Alec? Yes. And Jason? Yes. A little lag in the uh, yeah. audio, huh? There was a separate set a of lag in the, uh, audio. Huh? I, I don't know what uh, separate what, set. what that's coming from, but uh, there must be uh, maybe if anybody's not speaking to mute themselves, that might be. Jason, I think it's you. I, I unmute. I muted you, and it, and it stopped right away. So I, uh -huh. I don't know if you're in your room or or what. There was another set of minutes for the twenty fifth of March, and I was. Not mm -hmm. here. Should I like log off and try again? Set of minutes for the twenty fifth of March. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> not here. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a go. Okay. Or, or I was going to say he what he's done. He can call in with the audio if, if necessary. Oh, that's true. You can mute and call in. Um, so, the, someone want to make a motion to accept the minutes for the twenty fifth of March? Um, so moved. So moved. And a second. Was that Alex making a I'll second? I'll second again. Uh, and I uh, was not here, so I can't comment on those minutes, but uh, any discussion or amendments to those minutes? If not, all in favor? Sarah? Uh, Kevin? Uh, abstain, because I wasn't here. Ma yep. Mason? Yes. Randy? Abstain as well. I wasn't there. Jack? You're muted, Jack. Yes. Uh, and uh, Jen? Yes. And Alec? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, now, the first item is a uh, request for determination of applicability to determine whether resource area boundaries are accurately delineated. Uh, this having to do with pesticide application, herbicide application, um, uh, Pan Am Railway right of way going through Northampton. Uh, someone here to speak to that? Um, they, Pan Am doesn't usually send someone. It's not unusual okay. that, that no one is here. Last time they sent Keith Morris. I know he 
He's not, did he come last time? I know this comes up every every three years. This is something the Pan Am has. Yeah, I thought he did. Yeah, he's the one who filed the application. Um, uh -huh. but now, do they have to file again when it gets time to actually apply the stuff? No. Uh, they do have to send notice according to the pesticide board regulations, but they don't have to file another RDA. So this will be valid for three years. Because the yearly operational plan would take care of permission for that, right? Well, when um, do they renew that? That I don't know offhand. That's on a different schedule. From I'm just wondering when we can have a say as to how they apply the stuff or not do it on a windy day or whatever. That's I haven't seen, seen notice of their yearly operation plan in some time, but I, I would have to look up when they would need to renew that. That's something I could do. In, in the materials, um, in the application, they're going to be accompanied by uh, a consultant uh, during the application. So the, presumably uh, the wetlands consultant would require that they not uh, apply unless it was uh, the conditions were suitable. So um, I guess the, without uh, a presentation by uh, the applicant, um, it's up to us to uh, just discuss among ourselves. Um, or you could continue if you don't feel like you have enough information to make a decision at this point, since they're not here. What do you think, commissioners? Um, to me, it looked, once I saw the part about being accompanied by a wetlands um, consultant, I felt pretty comfortable that they're going to be um, obligated to do this according to the rules. I looked at the uh, boundaries years ago. They, they didn't appear to change very much at all um, from the, you know, the originally approved boundaries. But yeah, I thought that was, kind of, that was uh, something new, I think, uh, being accompanied by the uh, wetlands when they actually do the work. Right. That makes me more Well, having, having lived along the bike path for 18 years, actually before the bike path was the bike path, uh, it comes really close to the tracks. And uh, I'm just surprised that there isn't more public safety concerns if you're spraying that close to pedestrian. It's only a couple of feet away. I mow, I mow the bike path on King Street section and uh, I'm aware that they, they spray on a regular basis, but I just wonder about the safety involved there. You know, the site we're discussing is the actual railroad tracks that are active cool. now. Um, the old Boston and Main Line, now Pan Am. Yeah. Still close to the bike path. Yeah, yeah it's. But our purview has to do with the places where it's close to jurisdictional areas. So, so, not just so the, com the, the commission aspect. can comment as part of the yearly operations plan, um, public comment process about the herbicide itself and when and where it's applied. But it, the only jurisdiction under the Wellness Protection Act is, is just these different types of spray, no spray, low spray zone markings as related to wellness. Right. And those were those areas, those sections were demar uh, demarcated in the application. Yeah. And I, I included my standard comment that it would be great if they didn't use these, this uh, right, I type, saw of, that. type of herbicide because there are slightly more friendly methods. Um, and I don't know if that's something that they consider in their YOP. Well, we can comment. Um, uh, and it goes back to Mason's point about when do they have to get their yearly operating plan um, renewed and uh, can we have a say at that time about which uh, foliar sprays are used. But um, what do you think looked to me like it was uh, not quite rubber stamp, but a, a reasonable application. Um, as I said, when I saw that they're gonna be accompanied by a professional um, uh, 
wetlands consultant uh, to make sure it's done right. And I'm imagining it would be very That's unlikely very that unlikely. it's going to be uh, messy or windy That's or um, uh, in any other way uh, violating the stuff that we're responsible for. I, I agree with you, Kathy. I, uh, I'm comfortable with, with what they've submitted. Uh, any other comments about someone want to make a motion to close the hearing and we'll uh, rule on it today? We'll move we don't need to close it because it's an RDA. Oh, okay. no, it's an RDA, right. right. Good. So good. One less roll call. All right, good enough. One less roll call. Um, well, let's see. Staff recommendation, you, you took a look and confirmed um, that the, uh, the, the markings are painted as described in the application and comply with the regulations. Um, and so uh, the uh, determination for, within the Wetlands Act um, that uh, was, yes, the uh, delineation is accurately done. Um, someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Not you, go. Jason. Not you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Jason, you could call in separately, leave your Zoom on mute and, and call in at the number that uh, is attached to the agenda uh, with, on a phone and that would take care of that take feedback. Of that. I'm sorry, there was an issue. I, I, it's all choppy on my end as well. Uh -huh. Well, if you left yourself on mute and then called in, I think that would remove that uh, delayed feedback loop that we were getting. Um, so Sarah, you need a uh, motion's been made and seconded. You need a roll call. Yes. All right. Roll call. Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jen? Yes. Alec? Yes. And Jason? <laughs> Thumbs up for Jason. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Um, next item is the uh, review of the revised construction plan for Turkey Hill Road. Um, I was not here. Um, I was out of state with family that meeting. Um, so I've, I've looked at the, the new materials and um, I, um, I, I guess I can say that um, without having been there, I don't know what the discussion was, um, but the, uh, the idea that we would have approved the limit of work that is for permanent disturbance that's actually uh, touching a jurisdictional area, um, I don't think we've ever done that. So uh, I, um, that corner that goes all the way to uh, uh, the wetland, um, would, if, if you guys approved it um, during that meeting, that would have been unique, um, but I don't know what actually transpired. So I don't know who um, who has recall about. Um, uh, the, there's a, a section yeah. of the lawn, I guess, that that went real close to the resource area. Um, um, we wanted that to not be mowed anymore. Kind of right. a line between two areas that blocked that off. Um, that's on the uh, that's on the revised plan. They're, they're not at the no mow zone. Right, I see the no mow zone on the revised plan that uh, LC one twenty two, um, and um, it looks like the no mow zone is. Um, it, 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 the part I'm, I'm no, noticing, the known mow zone does come close to the boundary uh, of the, the, the wetland. What I'm thinking about is up near um, flag 39 to flag 38, 
that corner there actually looks like it touches the, the, the jurisdiction area. And that, that was the part that surprised me. But as I say, I was not party to the discussion. Would it help if I shared the plans that you're discussing now on the screen? Yes, uh, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it separately, but go, please, that would be useful. Sarah, would that be okay? Sure. Yep, I just turned that on, you should be able to. Specifically, can folks see this? Mm-hmm. So this is the area that um, we had talked. And actually, if I can share, uh, if it's OK to share this. This is the PDF that we had presented in the meeting on the 25th, um, our, our, the plan submission that we submitted to the commission prior to the meeting showed the erosion control barrier and the limited work line um, right at, Pretty close to the 50 foot wetland buffer zone in this portion of the site. Um, the site today looks like this. So this is the top of the driveway. Um, as you come up, the house is right behind you. Um, and this is the lawn area we're discussing. So it's a, an open lawn area. It's an existing lawn with the tree line along here. The area that we talked about, the no-mo zone, would be back in that area. Um, B, B38 through B41 is in this area. Um, so back on the plan, um, the plans we had submitted prior to the hearing had shown the erosion control trying to honor that 50 foot wetland buffer um, mm -hmm. line as much as we could. But then um, our, our builder reviewed the plans and um, would it be okay if, if, if we give you a little bit of a, a background of what recap of what we said or sure okay don do you want to talk about what you need for construction Don. sorry i was muted thanks can you hear me yes yeah uh we'd like to get about 30 feet between the corner of the new building and any anything that we can't drive over because when we trench for the foundation the soils are very um sandy and i think the angle of repose is going to uh create issues safety issues when we try to drive around the building um, there's very virtually no clay in the soil so it's uh, going to be quite a challenge to drive around the building with a with our uh, heavy equipment for the concrete foundation. <clears throat> if yes. uh, if you, I don't know, Rachel, if you can show the house on the site plan, uh, or whether that would be helpful or not. I don't. I I have to pop off and then pop back on. I think to pull that up. Um. I, it is. It is approximately here um so this this zone on the site is needed for what what don was just describing um and access into that area is needed needed in the zone um so so based upon that feedback that we got prior to the hearing in march um, we came before you with this with this diagram with the green line showing what, where we wanted to move the temporary erosion control barrier and limited work line. So today, this tree line exists in dips like this, and the this is the lawn area in the, that I showed you in that other photo. So we were asking, instead of having the erosion control barrier go down the middle of the existing lawn, if we could push it to the edge of the edge of the existing woods so that Dawn's crew um, could be safe with their excavation. Again, this would be a temporary limit of work line. Um, and that this area here would be de devoted to a no mo permanent no mo zone. After construction, this erosion control barrier would be removed and the lawn would be returned or restored to what it is today. 
So, um, so this is part, you know, in condition 25 is that that we would prepare plans that then we'll use for construction based upon um, what was discussed in the, in the conditions. So this is our our attempt at that of we've moved the green line is the erosion control barrier line up against the the wooded edge, um, and this is the area that we had devoted to the no mow zone. Um, Sarah, did we have a, uh, a way of demarking that? Uh, the commission did, didn't require any permanent marking. But I think that area falls between flags B43 and B45. So it would, it would be easy to delineate that so there's no confusion. And also we did make one other change. Um, on the previous plan you saw, we were dipping in to go around tree 1652 because it was dead and posed a danger. The little purple went down a little bit, Rachel, yep. Yeah. Um, but uh, it fell over of its own accord. So rather than us having to do anything with it, we just moved up the um, work line, so we're no longer going into that area to remove that tree. It was a dead tree. It was it was it's a it was a safety hazard, but she fell down by herself in March. So that was the other adjustment that we had done. So you can see that there, we've straightened out that line to try and um, uh, stay away from the work. Yeah. Yeah. And also, just so you know, where Rachel's got the hand there on the um, on the plan, mm -hmm. that is what is currently the driveway parking area for the existing house. Um, so when you come up the driveway, as you can see in the picture, you saw that those um, there's a white birch and a little sassafras tree. Yeah, we're, we're that's right where those um, the flags are behind it, back where those arrows go. But this this area with the rock, we're actually fencing that off because we want to we want to keep those trees and that island there. There's a little island of trees, and so that will all be blocked, and then it'll just go straight right down the tree line of the lawn. The resource area is a, a trench that the previous owner had dug, so um, it sits back in those leaves, that leaf area there. Um, and, it, and he sort of went in between the trees. And that's that's how we ended up with this. And his cabin, the cabin on the property is actually a little bit behind where the photographer is in this picture. So it's all sort of right there at the top of the driveway as you come up in that white birch and that little sassafras in, in this photo, those little black circles, uh, yep. what, what are those? Those are proposed edge of the temporary erosion control barrier where, I see. where we place that. So it looks from the photo as if, uh, unlike the, uh, the revised plan that we were just looking at, I, I, my concern was that um, we were gonna have a, uh, a limit of work or, uh, that was actually in the uh, jurisdictional area, 37, 38, 39, um, Oh, does that mean like in the actual resource area, like over where the flags are? It looked it looked that way. Yeah. If you go back to that uh, 122, right, right there. Um, okay. This might be a graphic thing, and I I apologize for that. This is um, this is the actual location of the flag. So we are outside. We're a good seven eight feet from the edge there. So the labels themselves at this I scale see. kind of float over. Because it, it, it looks like the corner is in uh, is on the flag of 38. Yeah. Um, and so. Uh -huh. it, and it, yeah. It, that, that was, as I said, it wasn't part of the original discussion, but when I looked at the plan, that was something that we wouldn't normally permit. Yeah. And so that's this, 
this line not green? Yeah, that, that's definitely not where we want to be. Yeah. So this is the, the closest point of the, of the wetlands to the existing lines is at this location. And we are, as, as Linda was saying, um, prior to that, we were closer to tree, six, tree 1652 because it was dead and it was a safety hazard, but the wind, some of those heavy winds that we got earlier this spring totally knocked it down. So it's a non-issue and we're gonna stay out out of that area altogether. Are you going to have to go in to uh, cut up the tree, or is it just going to be laid left to rot? She landed right in the lawn. <laughs> okay. We're going to leave the stump. Yeah, we'll leave the stump, but she's she's late. That's her. Oh, okay. Right there. <laughs> That's her. That was thoughtful. All right. Well, commissioners, you who were part of this original discussion, um, what do you think? My my concern was is alleviated by the understanding that uh, flag 38 is not actually um, where the wetland is. Yeah, I, I agree with this. I think this is good. Other comments the, from commissioners? Mason? I think the big concern was um, the drainage improvements that they made were really a, a, a good thing for the project. Um, it, it, uh, that, that's where they uh, really have their compensation for any of the lawn encroachments or anything. Mm -hmm. Within the 50 foot. Yeah, it's, uh, it, I mean, it's tremendous sheet runoff. This, this site is around 200 feet higher than the road. Heat runoff is uh, was a major concern out there. They've they seem to uh, really address that very well. So the request is to approve the uh, the new uh, plan as submitted. Yeah, so someone would just need to make a motion to accept. Um, these plans. Rachel, what's the date on these? Double check. I think it's May, um, May 10th. Whatever the date is as the official construction plans of record. And these will replace the, the ones in the file. May 10th. May 10th. Could someone uh, I'll make that motion? And the second? With these plans. Yep. Second. Any further discussion? If not, uh, Sarah, roll call. All right, Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Randy? Yes. yes. Jack? Yes. Ben? Yes. Yes. Alec? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Yeah. Sarah, I realize I just voted and I wasn't part of the original uh, hearing, so I don't know. If uh, that is, that's okay. Okay, okay, very good. All right, good, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's see if we got uh, any other uh, business, uh, mail, emergency permits, uh, anything? Uh, so the, the, we, the we have dog the dog, the dog letter, but- uh, It's the only other thing that, that I had on the agenda. Is that the only other thing? Okay, good. That's the only other thing. I thought the dog letter was, was I quite, quite a great Rachel, show. Rachel has a hand up. Uh, this is, I think this is more of an administrative question. Um, so one, it's our understanding the orders and conditions are going to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Um, is there any clarification that this, that this plan then would supersede any conflicting language in the order of conditions if it refers to different flags um, for the NOMO area in particular? So Rachel, I think the best way to do it since the order has already been issued with DEP, um, but we now have a clear note that these are the construction plans of record would be to reference these when you ultimately apply for a certificate of compliance and the condition can be changed at that point. Okay, so that's what, so that's when the condition would get changed at the registry. Yeah, um, but there, there would be no question going forward that these are the. 
Okay. Construction plans. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, very good. Sorry to have jumped ahead. Um, so Sarah, I thought your letter was excellent and I, because uh, uh, it's broader than just Fitzgerald Lake and actually broader than just dogs. Uh, it was talking about uh, really etiquette and consideration and the uh, issues that uh, heavy use of conservation lands uh, produce. And my thought was to, if the commission agrees, uh, that I could sign it on behalf of the whole commission uh, if everybody's had a chance to read Sarah's letter and that um, then at a future time if uh, uh, Bob and the Fitzgerald Lake folks continue to have a lot of problems then we could write something more uh, focused specifically on dogs at Fitzgerald Lake um, but I thought this broad thing as hey you did a good job of saying, you know, it's gotten a lot of use during COVID and we're coming out and people are starting to use it and let's be uh, thoughtful and respect, respectful and careful out there. Um, but that, that was set a good tone and it could be a two-step if at a later time there continues to be uh, dog issues. Um, I know one of the things that Bob wanted to take me up on I, and other commissioners had um, indicated a willingness in a, at a past meeting um, is to actually spend an hour or two handing out um, uh, brochures. I, I, I got my brochure when we relicensed our dog uh, last month. And um, it's actually quite a nice brochure um, that uh, the uh, Broadbrook Coalition has put together uh, that was now attached to dog license renewals. Um, and if they had a, uh, a, a supply of those, when people, if you're standing by the entrance at uh, probably the North Farms entrance, uh, as people come in with dogs, we could hand them one and be wearing some kind of, I don't know, medallion or uh, superhero costume or something that says we're part of the Conservation Commission. Um, but uh, that would be a separate step. I thought this letter was a good first step. I don't know if anybody else had a chance to read it. Yeah, I agree with you, Kevin, and I like the idea of a second step. I, I like how this is a little bit broader, like it doesn't really mention the challenge with the dog, dogs until the third paragraph, but it's a nice introductory, like we all have to be good stewards of our right. conservation land. And if it still is a challenge, I like your, the more pointed um, approach you just described. Right, yeah, we come back at a later time and, you know, say, hey, dummies, we, we, we tried to be nice, but, you know, now we're going to be pushing. Can't be so. nice anymore. <laughs> That makes sense to everybody. Uh, to, I don't know if you've had a chance to read the letter, but I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, and no, I read through it. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. I think it's a, a good way to start. Okay, good. Hmm. I think, yeah, I, I agree. I, I thought it was great. And I, I just think it's good to like get us on record um, in a gentler, kinder way <laughs> until we really dig into the dog thing. Um, I don't, I mean, having, managed a community farm I don't I wish I had more insights on how to change the public's behavior but um <laughs> it's really really challenging but I think in person and as much signage as we can offer is really helpful but he has also installed new signage um what else have they done There's, you know the, the brochure is available at, at kiosks I don't know or have a sense if any of that is actually working or having an effect um, but and, and I said the to Bob, uh, I said to Bob Zimmerman that um, if they can get the uh, waste hauling company, um, USA or whoever took over from um, the old group, um, that I would personally uh, buy a, a year's worth of a can sitting out there at the entrance. I don't know, Sarah, if that's actually permissible, but um, they have it at the entrance to both ends of, of the Greenway at, along the Mill River at Federal Street and at Ward Avenue, um, where USA Waste has a can and they empty it every Wednesday. Um, and I think they do that out of the goodness of their heart, but if they don't have a nearby customer on uh, North Farms Road, I told Bob, uh, you know, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll buy a year of that and we'll see how that works. But um, I haven't heard back from Bob about that. 
Yeah, the one on Ward Avenue, I know USA Recycling does at no cost, but they have so many pickups in the area, it doesn't really right, right. have an impact for them. I, I don't know if they do a lot on North Farms Road. I think the only issue with that is it has to be on a level surface that's easily able to be gotten to with a trash with truck. A, yeah. So it would most likely have to be brought to someone else's property, maybe mm -hmm. in the subdivision across the street. Say, do you think the uh, parking area at North Farms isn't big enough for a truck to go in and get it? Yeah, I, I don't think they would be able to access it there. Ah. They usually do early morning pickups, which is really the, the time when Fitzgerald Lake is getting a lot of use. Uh -huh. All right, well, we'll see. Bob hasn't gotten back to me, uh, so we'll see if that actually goes anywhere. But for now, first step, um, we'll take this letter. Uh, shall I sign on behalf of the entire commission? Um, and we'll send it into the Gazette and have that be a first step and then we'll see how things go. We'll stay in touch with Bob and see how. Uh, hope, hope most of the dog walkers read the paper. Right, well, um, it's a, uh, one of the things that I thought uh, might be useful is the, the brochure that they put together, apparently without our knowledge at all, um, uh, which was, interesting but you know better to ask for forgiveness than permission i guess um, and the uh, uh that if they could put a poster sized version of that um at the entrance i thought that might be useful so um yeah i think personally just having again managed sort of public access lands um i think the more signage on site the better like the more that people are having to disobey reminders, like the more you'll really alter behavior over the long run. Um, I also, I was on a hike recently on a Kestrel property that had a really great graphic sign in the front that was all about kind of the impact of dogs off leash and dog waste. And it was really simple, but like really drove home the point and if you were a caring person it would be hard to read and then disobey it which <laughs> mm -hmm. again like these are deep grooves that people are in behaviorally but um you know appealing to people's better selves and intellect i think is a way to go so it's always worth a try yeah. yeah i can i'll go back and just take a picture of that and i'll i'll revisit and just look at the i haven't looked at the signage at fitzgerald like carefully but um, that's just in my experience, like on site, just having to walk past several times, even a little sign within the property that just says, like, hike your dog waste out. Um, it really isn't that hard to do. And there's lots of alternatives if people want to be running their dog. And um, yeah, anyway. I was wondering, Sarah, if people would take the, the, the final paragraph of your letter as an indication to, uh, oh, you should take your dogs up to Mineral Hills. There's no, not a lot of traffic out there. But. Yeah, I kind of got that feeling. <laughs> uh, Wayne had added that in an edit. Um, I, he goes out in conservation areas a lot, and I think he really just isn't seeing a whole lot of people at Mineral and Sawmill Hills. Yeah. Like, it's so much use. Right. And there really are other nice places in the city. To right, there really are. You want people to go visit. Yeah, you do have the feeling that it's being loved to death. Uh -huh. There are other beautiful places to hike. Yeah, the uh, the quarry is actually quite quite nice. I, I mm -hmm. uh, hiked up there with a friend and we took a couple of uh, lightweight um, you know, camping chairs and sat there and had lunch looking out over the quarry. And I remember back when it had recently been acquired and there wasn't, it was just rock. There wasn't any uh, um, the rainwater did, hadn't pulled up and then there hadn't been cattails or anything else decomposing. So now it looks like a well-established uh, uh, marshy area down in, in, in the, the quarry. But, you know, 15 years ago, it was um, bare rock and brand new. And I, I remember being worried about, oh, there's going to be all kinds of adolescents climbing, scaling these rock walls and um, uh, falling off. And that's, that's what I would have done when I was 17. Um, but... Uh, I've so seen far, it. Have you? We haven't yeah. found any bodies at the bottom. So I've seen I've seen them also throwing large rocks off the side, which is terrifying. But <laughs> again, I probably would have done the same thing. When I was <laughs> That's, right. That's right. 
All right. Well, then I will uh, uh, send this in uh, on behalf of the commission to the Gazette and uh, we'll take uh, next steps at some future time unspecified right now. You might want to bold the part about uh, the leashing of dogs on uh, public property. That's pretty oh. important because a lot of them just let them run loose down the trails. And, and right. Really emphasize that particular uh, paragraph there. Good. I mean, uh, I think that. Good. in I think that in and of itself could be its own letter in the future, just talking about, I don't, it's just such an entrenched idea in this town that people's dogs have the right to run free. Um, I've just bumped up against it so many times that, um, and there is, you know, there are places where that's possible, but it's not everywhere. And I don't, people just really deeply don't believe that. So that might require its own kind <laughs> thoughtful letter but maybe in the future but i yeah i mean that's an important one that i don't think people pay attention to and the other side of the the uh, uh south side of, of of the mill river um the, you know, the, the, near the cross-country 5k area and so forth there's People think of that as a God-given right to have their dogs running around over there in spite of the signage that, I don't know if it's still there, but a few years ago it was up by the parking area by the public or community gardens. Um, and um, don't know, I agree with Jen that it's hard to know how to change. And people's. Smith's Vocational had a, a pretty concerted um, public outreach effort after some pushback from Department of Agricultural Resources about um, dogs on the farm fields there to try and get people to put their dogs on leash. And uh, that was pretty short lived before was people right. diverted back to. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they all did. packed up and went to Fitzgerald Lake. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and they did put up signage all around uh, the farm field so you don't actually see as many dogs because it seems nice. just to be pretty sparse. And uh, you see it now, and it's very, very evident. And, and you don't see as many dogs out in the fields anymore. Uh -huh. Oh, good, good, good. And they also have a garbage can at the front, and so you don't see the bags as often on the along trails. the trail, right? Yeah. And, the and worst I, of I, both worlds. Yeah, I would encourage Bob to look at that. I mean, if there's some way to figure that out, because that would probably half the people that don't would probably bring it out if they could drop it off at the parking lot. Right. Yeah, I think that's part of the, you know, oh, I got to put this bag of crap in my car yep. uh, and bring it home. You know, if there were a can there, I think you're right. It'd be much more likely. All right. Anything else? We uh, probably are getting pretty close to being able to meet in person again, I would think. Everybody vaccinated? I'm, I'm, yep. Yeah. I've actually had people over for dinner um, two nights so, ago. So. so we, yeah. I mean, we may not be able because of city regulations to meet in person, but we could always go for a beer afterwards. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. We used to do that actually. Um, yep. When I was first uh, a member of the commission and Paul uh, Wetzel was uh, the chair and he used to take everybody over to the brewery after um, almost yeah. every week. So well, I, I would be in favor of reviving that tradition. Reviving that tradition. <laughs> yeah, able right. to meet <laughs> All right, well, coming, coming soon to a, a meeting near you as a, a second floor city hall meeting and to be followed in a celebratory way of, by a gathering at the, um, the, the brewery, which has that nice outdoor space, so. Yeah, we a couple of months on that, getting together with everybody. I uh, go surgery next Wednesday. Oh. What are you having we, done? I'll be walker in, walkering it for a while. Ooh. It's well, a hip. A hip. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I have my first running injury after 55 years of running, um, and it, it, it's my hip. But what they decided to do, uh, well, they asked me if I wanted surgery, and I said, hell no. But they, there's a, a, a platelet-rich plasma injection where they take your own blood and they put it in a centrifuge and they extract the platelets, which have a lot of growth factors and other things in it. And then they inject that into the tendon area. Um, 
right now, it's just two days ago, so it hasn't changed anything yet, but I'm hopeful. Um, so I'm, I, I'm hopeful to avoid getting a major hip surgery. So uh, Well, both hips are bone on bone, so it's just a matter of time before the other one comes. Yep. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And um, we'll, Sarah, what, we have our next meeting on? Uh, that will be May 27th. And at this point, there's at least two uh, requests for determina determination applications, one uh, for water chestnut removal. I think we're, even though the commission agrees that water chestnut removal is fine, we're, we're obligated to do this. this is at Fitzgerald or? Um, citywide, but specifically at Fitzgerald Lake, yeah, okay. BBC to continue their efforts and also for some boardwalk installation at the, the new Wilbur property. And, uh, Fitzgerald at, the, at which property? Uh, the Wilbur property. That's the one on the, that was just acquired late last year on the, the southerly side of the, the trail in from the Moose Lodge. Oh, oh, okay. Right. Yep. Right. Good. All right, so we will actually be there in two weeks. That'd be a Zoom meeting. I'm sure that won't be oh, yeah. changed. For that. That's too soon. But all right. Good to see everybody. Good to see you. Take care. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sarah.